Hello and welcome to Root Cause Analysis, Eliminating Unplanned Events. My name is Kevin Sutherland and I'm a Senior Consultant in Product Success at Bentley Systems. Whether your organization calls it a breakdown, an emergency, or an incident, they all fall into the category of unplanned events. Events that come in between otherwise normal operations and impact production, quality, customer service, worker safety, or the environment. They're caused by a variety of things. Maybe equipment failure, lack of documentation, human error, misunderstanding of processes, unsafe conditions, etc. The one thing they all have in common is they make our organizations unreliable, and that negatively impacts profitability. Root cause analysis can serve as a technique to both determining exactly why did the event happen and what solution can we put in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. When RCA is done correctly, companies can eliminate the causes of their most chronic and highest impact unplanned events. Applying root cause analysis correctly isn't without its challenges. The first challenge is selecting the right opportunities for RCA that ultimately produce business value. Now, selecting the right opportunities can be tricky. When organizations have a serious safety or environmental event or even a significant production loss, it's an easy decision and maybe even a mandatory step to use root cause analysis to ensure the incident doesn't happen again. However, in mid to large size organizations, a couple of factors make it difficult to understand the frequency and impact of unplanned events. First, organizations with multiple units and multiple sites can have the same issue often occurring several times in several places, but it can go unnoticed when data isn't shared or analyzed. Second, even when data on unplanned events is available and shared, it's often poorly coded and can't be effectively analyzed then. These issues lead to gut feel decisions on where to apply RCA, which typically result in too many or too few analyses or selections that simply don't produce value. One of the most frustrating things that can occur with root cause analysis is getting a good team together, conducting a successful RCA, documenting the action plan, and then along the way, somewhere, someone drops the ball. Nothing gets implemented and nothing changes. This can happen in several ways. Poor communication between the team once a solution and action items are determined. Multiple handoffs and systems involved in implementing the action items. Difficulty of tracking assignments, due dates, and action items to resolution. And lack of leadership visibility into the process and implementation. Once the RCA items are implemented, it's tempting to assume they'll be a complete success and move on to solving the next unplanned event or bad actor. A bit of caution is recommended here to periodically follow up on the implemented fixes to make sure they're having the desired effect. If there's no evaluation on costs, incidents, or performance, these events may creep back onto the list of bad actors. The challenge is that it's very resource intensive to look across an organization and sift through events, cost, and production to verify that our solutions are having impact. In the case of each of these challenges, a sound work process and technology can be a workforce multiplier towards eliminating unplanned events. A proactive root cause analysis work process helps ensure that the best candidates for improvement are selected that the findings are implemented successfully, and that we periodically evaluate our solution to determine its effectiveness. The example process on the screen shows an active bad actor analysis program looking at impact from the unplanned events like failure records, work order costs, and production losses. Bad actors are then assigned to improvement teams for RCA projects and meetings are planned. The analysis is conducted and findings and action items are reported. The team then follows through until all action items are implemented and then puts in place the structure for monitoring to ensure the solution has the desired impact. Bentley's AssetWise Asset Reliability Solution helps organizations adopt reliability and improvement work processes like the proactive RCA work process. Asset Reliability integrates with the major enterprise asset management solutions to define and manage the assets and the asset strategy. It tracks the execution of that strategy as proactive inspection events, but also captures unplanned events and their consequences. Consequence like failure type and rate, work order costs, production losses, and potentially safety and environmental impacts. 
Asset reliability then provides analysis capability, including root cause analysis, on those events to determine solutions and implement action items, ultimately to continuously improve the asset strategy. Making the process of eliminating unplanned events simpler and more effective for organizations produces value in key areas. We increase the return on assets by increasing the useful life of assets and increasing productivity. Operational performance is improved with shortened outages and downtime, as well as improved maintenance efficiency. And because we better understand and manage risk, compliance is easier and safety is improved. And now, on to the root cause analysis demonstration. I'll conduct this demonstration in the role of the plant reliability engineer. So, I come into work in the morning and launch my asset reliability home dashboard. My dashboard includes a mix of leading and lagging performance KPIs, which show both how well the company is complying with our reliability programs and what the impact of that program is on asset performance. However, my initial focus every morning is reviewing the near-time and real-time events in the current alarms section. These alarms come from condition-based maintenance, predictive maintenance, operator rounds, and online data points. They're warning me that the condition of these assets is degrading. When it comes to these alarms and the associated historical asset data, I have two important jobs. First, to turn these alarms into planned corrective work orders where maintenance can intervene well in advance of failure so that there's minimal impact on operations. My second job is to dig a little deeper into these assets, their performance history, their mean time between failure, and determine if this is a one-time event or if it's a chronic problem where the asset would be considered a bad actor. First of all, I notice that there are multiple alarms on asset 104304, number one pump. The top two alarms are in urgent state. My engineering judgment is telling me that the low flow reading is likely also the cause for the low pump efficiency. I'll open up the low flow alarm for more information. Dropping down to the readings tab, I see more perspective on how the current reading is below normal levels, but looking just a bit deeper, I can also see that this is hardly the first time this pump's had an issue. Notice the blue diamonds show historical work orders on the timeline. There have been approximately 10 over the past 10 years. The orange and the yellow squares show potential failures and partial failures, and there have been six in this period. So not only is pump number one an issue this morning, but it's had repeated failures histor historically. Quickly clicking down to the usage view, I can see that we've performed a failure modes and effects analysis on this pump, and this flow monitoring task is in place to control the failure mode pump impeller wear. With an asset strategy in place, it's not typical to see repeated failures and issues like this. It makes sense to dig deeper into this pump's performance, so I'll open the performance management view. The initial report shows the top 10 asset types for failures over the past 18 months. Notice that centrifugal pumps is the worst type for failures with four. Clicking in for more detail, I can see that number one pump has had two of these failures and both were attributed to pump impeller wear. Expanding my available reports, I can also see bad actors by mean time between failure or MTBF on critical assets. Here I see that number one pump or asset 104304 has the third worst MTBF among all my equipment. So to review, this pump is currently in alarm status because of low flow. It's had several failures or unplanned events over the past 10 years, and it's currently on a couple of my bad actor lists. The number one pump's repeated low flow and impeller wear issues make it a great candidate for root cause analysis. The RCA tab shows us root cause analyses that have been performed at my site. For the sake of the demo, I fast forwarded the process a few days to where the reliability team and I would have the RCA on number one pump completed. I'll open the analysis to review the whole process. The analysis opens at the properties view. 
And this is where all the administrative information for the root cause analysis resides. Information like meeting schedule, meeting notes, process checklist, the asset operating context, and the RCA team are kept here. The definition view is where we define the problem, repeated pump flow and impeller issues. This view is also where we can document the consequences of the problem in terms of cost of the business and risk. And where we can view the historical failure records which come in automatically for this asset. As well as where we can view photos of any kind of failed components. The analysis view is the actual root cause analysis palette. It starts with the defined problem and moves out to potential causes, which we either validate or eliminate until we get to the root cause. Our team built this RCA tree by simply clicking and dragging the elements from the left and dropping them on the palette on the right. Then the asset reliability solution provides the ability to enter verification evidence about this possible cause to validate it or mark it as eliminated. Notice in the case of high particle concentration, our team performed sampling of the cooling water and determined that it did in fact have higher than expected particle count. Once the verification step is done, I can right click to change the possible cause to a valid or to an eliminated cause. In this case, our team determined that these failures resulted from normal process variations, which caused the process temperature to occasionally rise. When our operators saw this, they thought they were doing the right thing by changing to an alternate, colder and deeper cooling water source in the nearby river. The issue is that they didn't know that the particle count and sand content of this source made it only usable as a short time solution. Once operators made this change, it often would remain for long periods of time. Ultimately, the failures were from operational error due to lack of proper training. The solution view displays the root cause or causes and facilitates the solution. It does this by either looking at the problem and root cause through the lens of a failure mode or by creating an improvement project to address the root cause through one or more work requests or recommendations. First, remember that our team has already done a failure mode and effects analysis on this pump, and we had a strategy to detect impeller wear. The failure mode and high level details are shown to the right. If I double click and open the failure mode in question and drop to the implementation tab, we can see the current strategy. But that doesn't account for the lack of proper operating procedures that we've discovered from our root cause analysis. At the secondary action plan tab, we can create a redesign modification task of improve and deliver operator training as a recommendation. And linked to that recommendation is a work request, which is assignable to the appropriate employee and can be given a due date for the changes to be completed. Alternatively, we can request an analysis improvement project. That option launches an improvement project which is assignable and has due date controls, which can then generate and manage any number of recommendations or work requests. Those recommendations are tied to the root cause analysis and can then be managed and tracked on the asset history view. Back at the solution view, the benefits tab allowed us to calculate the cost avoidance value of preventing this failure in the future along with the cost of implementation for a total benefit to the organization. To conclude, Asset reliability helped me focus on both a current problem and a historical bad actor for improvement. I used the solution to easily organize the team and plan meetings, 
and asset reliability brought together the existing strategy, current condition, historical failures, and photos of the number one pump in order for our team to have all the relevant data at our fingertips. We diagram potential causes until we determine the root cause and then put the actions in place to implement the solution. We've assigned the tasks and recommendations and given due dates to track our progress to follow through the completion. In summary, Bentley AssetWise Asset Reliability Solution and sound reliability work processes have put us on the path to eliminating unplanned events.